is Lady Boulay, and I hope you're having a blessed day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. And yes, we are commanded to love one another, whether we want to or not, or whether we agree with each other or not. And I want to talk about something that I'm starting to notice, and you probably have too. They keep bringing museums, African American museums, African American memorials, a statue to this black person, a statue to that black person. They keep wanting to do commemorations of black American, African American, ADOS history, but they don't want to pay us any money. Money, money, money. We need our money. The world runs on money, not museums. And they're making money off these museums. People are coming from far and near to visit these museums. And it's not cheap. Still making money off of us. And they love to talk about how much we suffer. They love to talk about all the things that were done against us. They love to talk about, ooh, they love to talk about slavery. Slavery was the favorite time in America for many of the people who were doing the talking, their ancestors, and they want things to be back just like they were. They cannot acknowledge that that was a moment in time, a moment for people to reflect on who they were and what their purpose was in the earth. It was a moment in time for the people who suffered in that captivity system to come into the knowledge of who they were. And we're still in that vibration. We're still there coming to terms with who we are. We are here for a specific purpose. We're not here to be lollygagging and acting like the enslavers, acting like the oppressors. We are here to be witnesses for what's happening here, what's going to happen, and who's in control of the universe. And we are uniquely placed to be that exceptional people who can tell the story. It's really that simple. On April 4th, 1968, Reverend Billy Cowles witnessed the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King on the balcony of the Lorraine Motel in Memphis. Reflecting on that moment, Reverend Cowles remarked many years later that God had revealed to him why he was there. He said, I was there to be a witness. Crucifixions have to have witnesses. So we're here to be witnesses of what has happened and what will happen to this great empire. We are here to be witnesses and we know that our work is important. The work that has been done and that's being done in America by black Americans, ADOS, whatever you call yourself. We know this work is important because they keep building museums and memorials and statues and things like that to our ancestors and in modern times they continue to add to the body of work that we've already created second to none second to none and if we were not important they wouldn't be making these markers the way they are so they're willing to talk about our suffering ad nauseum they're willing to build museums and memorials and talk about it and make movies about it, but they don't want to give us any money. And what we keep hearing is that they are afraid of black superiority. Now, why would that enter into anybody's imagination? The people who were enslaved. Now you're afraid of them feeling superior to you. Why would that be the case? You had a 400, 500, however many years you want to put on it, head start, where we were basically at the bottom of the real barrel with no laws, in fact, reduced to less 
than a human being. And now, 500 years later, you're afraid of black superiority? Okay. That's something to be studied for somebody else. I'm not going to touch that because from my standpoint, if I would call in myself superior and I had somebody else enslaved and had reduced them to three-fifths of a person, and then four or five hundred years later, they were on my heels competing with me and giving me a run for my money, I would be scared too. I would be scared because I've already told you what you were and you're proving me wrong. So anyway, I want I just wanted to bring that point out that America is willing to give us all of the museums we want, all of the memorials we want, all of the TV shows and movies about slavery and Jim Crow and the brutality and violence against us and our people that we want, but they don't want to pay us for all of that suffering. And that is what's puzzling to me. We don't know who it was. Well, yes, you do, because you got a whole museum all over the country. Really, I just read they're doing some kind of museum in Seattle. And I'm going to go back and check that to make sure we didn't even have slavery in Seattle. But they are doing some kind of museum, African-American. Let me check that. So I Googled, is there an African-American museum in Seattle, Washington? And it said, certainly. In Seattle, you can explore the Northwest African-American Museum, NAAM. This museum serves to present and preserve the connections between the Pacific Northwest and people of African descent celebrating black experiences in America through exhibitions, programs, and events. So now they've got an African American museum in Seattle of all places. So this is what I'm saying. Why? Because it sells. People want to know about it because we are a unique people. We just need to be paid for being unique. I've been asking myself, okay, in Alabama, what would they put in a museum that didn't include black people? First on the list, they would talk about how they took the land from the indigenous people in Alabama and made settlers here. They would talk about that. The conquest of Alabama, which is part of the Georgia territory for a long time. But that had to do with taking land away from another group of people. And by the way, in the city of Tuscaloosa, where I have lived and studied, the name of Tuscaloosa came from an Indian chief named Chief Tuscaloosa. And Tuscaloosa means black warrior. There is a river that runs down the west side of Alabama called the Black Warrior River. So make of that what you will. The other thing they would talk about is what the all-time favorite, the Civil War. Ooh, they cannot get enough of talking about that Civil War. What was that Civil War about? It was about trying to hold on to those enslaved people. So that's their history. Because if they try to claim country music, black people say, uh-uh, uh-uh, <laughs> that ain't y'all. If, if they try to claim anything else, it's going to be connected with the enslaved people building it or maintaining it. So I don't even know what they talk about. It's a beautiful state. There's all kinds of geography. Geographically, it is a beautiful state. It has hills and mountains, plateaus. It has coastal regions. It has the beautiful forestry. It's a beautiful state. But that was God made. So I'm just trying to think about what they would talk about. And I just don't know what they would put in a museum that, that did not include black people. If you go to these houses, these plantation houses, They'll start trying to tell you something about the planter. He was a planter. 
Yeah, well, what is a planter? A person that owns a plantation that has black people in captivity. That's what a planter is. He didn't do that work. He didn't build that house. He didn't buy that land. He took that land. So what's your history? So anyway, y'all, you just see where I'm, you see where I'm coming from. Y'all see where I'm coming from. I'm saying, just pay us our money. We need our money. We don't need any more museums. We need our money. Then we can build our own museums. Okay, y'all. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Share the video. And as always, have a great day.